The goal of this experiment is to obtain both behavioural and neural markers of human higher cognitive function. First, we will explain the motivation for this study and introduce some of the behavioural and neural measures. If you want to skip the background and go directly to the methods, you can click on the link. This project is motivated by a convergence of two types of evidence, both of which suggest a trade-off between two broad cognitive domains, a socio-emotional cognitive domain and a spatio-visual cognitive domain. The first source of evidence is biological. As the science of human brain imaging has begun to mature, it has become apparent that tasks which involve emotion and emotion regulation, social reasoning and empathy, and self-related processing activate one network of brain areas, whereas tasks which are more externally focused, such as visual attention and problem-solving tasks, activate a different network. Here you can see a contrast image generated from the main scanner task we use, which compares social reasoning with scientific reasoning. If we flip from the lateral surface of the brain here to the medial or internal surface, then we can see areas in yellow which are more active during social than during scientific reasoning. These brain areas are also engaged when people are explicitly instructed to focus internally on their own experiences. If we flip back to the lateral surface, particularly if we look at the brain more from above, then we can see blue areas in intraparietal sulcus, the frontal eye fields, and lateral frontal cortex. These areas, which are associated with visual attention and working memory, are more active during scientific than during social reasoning. These comparisons show that very different networks of brain areas are involved in spatiovisual and socio-emotional cognition. However, there is an even more intriguing biological observation that has come to light in recent years. It appears that these networks are not just separate, but that they have an antagonistic relationship with one another. In other words, when we activate the spatiovisual network, for instance, by engaging in scientific reasoning, then we deactivate or turn off our socio-emotional brain networks. This push-pull relationship between socio-emotional and spatiovisual brain networks can even be seen in the absence of any task, when people are simply at rest and thinking their own thoughts. These antagonistic brain networks are illustrated by the red and green areas shown to the right of this figure. To the left, you can see sped up video of spontaneous activity in the brain while someone is lying in the scanner with no explicit instruction other than to look at a fixation point. It isn't just in the brain that we see a trade-off or push-pull relationship between socio-emotional and spatio-visual cognition. Psychological research in three areas also suggests a trade-off in performance between these domains. This is seen in research on autism spectrum disorders research on sex or gender differences, and research on cultural differences. The most significant of these areas is autism research. It has long been recognized that individuals with autism have some very well-developed skills. Psychologists have made progress measuring and characterizing these skills in recent years, and the data suggests that individuals with autism excel at quantitative, analytic, and problem-solving tasks that are visuospatial in nature. For instance, in the embedded figures task, one has to locate a geometric shape embedded within a larger figure. Individuals with autism tend to be better than average on this task. They also tend to have strengths in visual search, scientific reasoning, and on the most widely used spatial test of general intelligence, which is called Raven's matrices. Here, the participant has to select the figure that completes the grid. Some published studies indicate that individuals with autism have difficulties identifying biological motion. We have constructed a test to assess this skill. This will allow us to see if biological motion recognition is related to other skills that some individuals with autism have difficulty with, such as facial emotion recognition. Research on gender differences also suggests strengths in spatiovisual cognition for males versus socio-emotional cognition for females. The mental rotations task shows the largest and most robust sex difference of all validated cognitive tasks. Here, individuals must rotate a three-dimensional geometric figure 
in their head in order to determine which of the alternatives match the figure to the far left. This explains the motivation for our study and serves to introduce you to a number of the tasks and the principal measures of neural function we use. With this background in hand, now we will move to covering some of the important details and challenges involved in conducting the study.